ring cling I'm so in ring shrink ka e la ring asaka hala ring taka la ring so I'm cling ring shrink Namaste. Welcome to Srimad Devi Bhagavatam. The Sanskrit verse you just heard is the Sodashi Mantra. Sodashi Mantra is the most powerful and beneficial Vedic prayer. It invokes the Shakti of Goddess Lalita, also known as Tripura Sundari, Mahamaya, Durga, and many other names. Who is Goddess Lalita? This Srimad Devi Bhagavatam is her story. Listen, and you will gain immense spiritual benefit. Namaste. So, everybody seems to like the commentaries better than the reading. But without watching the reading video, you, you can't understand the commentary. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is combine them both, read a little bit, and then make some comments. It'll, it'll be slower, but hopefully will help to uh, keep some of the attention. <laughs> so we're on the fourth chapter of the first skanda of Srimad Devi Bhagavatam. And so far what happens is uh, Vyasadeva becomes despondent because he doesn't have a son and he thinks he can't get to heaven. So he goes to a beautiful spot in the mountains and he runs into who? Narada Muni. <laughs> Narada Muni always shows up, you know, just at the right time <laughs> to forward the plot. And so he asks this question, who can I worship who will give me a son very quickly? Now here's Narada's reply. Sutta said, thus questioned by Krishna Dvaipayana Veda Vyasa, the high-souled Narada Muni, well-versed in the Vedas, became very glad and spoke thus. O highly fortunate Parashara's son, the question that you have asked me today was formerly asked by my father, Brahma, to Narayana. At this, Narayana Vasudev, the deva of the devas, the creator, preserver, and destroyer of the universe, the husband of Lakshmi, the four-armed, wearing yellow garments, holding a conch shell, discus, club, and with the mark of Srivatsa, a mark or curl of hair on the heart of Vishnu, adorning his breast, and decorated with the Kaustuva gem, the divinity himself became merged in great yoga, at this, my father became greatly surprised and said, O Janardana, thou art the deva of the devas, the lord of the present, past, and the future, the lord of this universe. Why art thou meditating in yoga? And what is it that thou art meditating on? O best of the devas, thou art the lord of the entire universe, and yet, Thou art now merged in deep meditation. At this I am greatly surprised. What more wonderful than this can happen? So Brahma, desiring to get sons, has gone to Vishnu, Narayana. Because Narayana is Brahma's father. Brahma is born or appears in a lotus flower grown from the navel of Narayana. 
So he thinks of Narayan as his father. And we'll see a little bit that's not exactly correct. <laughs> but anyway, he goes to him anytime he has any questions or doubts. So he goes to him now and asks this question. And he sees him merge into deep meditation. So the question arises for Brahma, well, who is he meditating on? Is there anybody higher? Because up to this time, he doesn't know anything more. He doesn't know anything beyond Vishnu. Now, of course, <laughs> this is where a lot of us find ourselves because we have been taught or brought up or educated or we have heard that Vishnu is the highest. Vishnu is the God. Huh? He is, as Brahma says, the creator, preserver and destroyer. But actually, this isn't exactly true. It's a, a convenient fiction to enable people to present the Vedic path as monotheism. Monotheism with a male supreme God. But actually, <laughs> that's not the Vedic path. And later on, we'll see uh, well, way later on, we'll see that uh, these religions like Vaishnavism, Shaivism, uh, Ganapatism, <laughs> you know, all these different uh, deity worship cults that have sprung up in India in the last, you know, well, since the beginning of Kali Yuga, 5,000 years ago, are actually non-Vedic. They actually disagree or deviate from the Vedic conclusion. And we're going to find out what the Vedic conclusion is here in a minute. O Lord of Rama, I am sprung from the lotus of thy navel and have become the Lord of this whole universe. Who is there in this universe that is superior to thee? Kindly reveal this to me. O Lord of the world, Thou art the origin of all, the cause of all causes, the creator, preserver, and destroyer, and the capable doer of all actions. O Maharaja, at thy will I create this whole universe, and Rudra destroys it in due time. He is always under thy command. O Lord, by thy command, the sun roams in the sky, the wind blows in various auspicious or inauspicious ways, and the fire is giving heat, and the cloud showers rain. I don't see in the three lokas anyone superior to thee. Then, whom art thou meditating on? This is my main point of doubt. O one of good vows, I am thy devotee. Be merciful to me and speak this to me. There is almost nothing that is secret to the Mahapurushas. This is a well-known fact. So Brahma is saying, O Lord of Rama, Rama is another name of Lakshmi, that there is nobody higher in this universe. Is there? If, then who are you meditating on? He's bewildered because he's never seen anyone beyond this. And then he also says, look, if, even if it's very confidential, even if it's a secret, that's okay, because I'm one of the Mahapurushas. I'm one of the great personalities of this universe. So you can tell me, okay, Pop? <laughs> tell me your secret. So then he goes on. Thus, hearing Brahma's words, Bhagavan Narayana replied, O Brahma, I now speak out my mind to you. Listen carefully. Though the devas, dhanavas, and men, and all the lokas know that you are the creator, I am the preserver, and Rudra is the destroyer, yet it is to be known that the saints versed in the Vedas have come to this conclusion by inference from the Vedas that the creation, preservation, and destruction are performed by the creative force, 
preservative force and destructive force, respectively. The rajasic creative force residing in you, the sattvic preservative force residing in me, and the tamasic destructive force residing in Rudra are the all in all. When these shaktis become absent, you become inert and incapable to create, I to preserve, and Rudra to destroy. So now, this is the first use of this word shakti. What does shakti mean? Shakti means force, energy, power. In physics, Power is defined as the ability to do work. So when we talk about horsepower or the power, uh, for example, um, to move an object, huh? the, the most fundamental equation in physics is F equals MA. Force equals mass times acceleration. So the force, oh, you Star Trek fans, the force is the fundamental energy that makes possible all phenomena, all existence, motion, and ultimately destruction in the universe. So Vishnu is kind of bringing in subtly this idea of force or Shakti. And Shakti is going to become the dominant theme of this whole work. O oh, intelligent Suvrata, we are always under that force, directly or indirectly. Here are instances that you can see and infer. At the time of Pralaya, I lie down on the bed of Ananta, subservient to that force. Again, I wake up in the time of creation, duly under the influence of time. I am always subservient to that Maha Shakti. Under her command, I am engaged in tapasya for a long time. By her command, sometimes I enjoy with Lakshmi. Sometimes I fight battles terrible to all the lokas with the dhanavas, involving great bodily troubles. O oh, knower of dharma, in your presence I fought hand to hand for 5,000 years on that one great ocean in long past days with the two demons, Madhu and Kaitaba, sprung from the wax of my ear and maddened with pride. And I killed those two Dhanavas successfully by the grace of the Devi. So now Vishnu is telling Brahma, look, actually I'm not the highest. Actually I'm, I'm not the supreme force in this universe. There's something greater than me, this Maha Shakti. And so uh, the sages think that you are the creator, I'm the preserver, and Rudra is the destroyer. But they reach this conclusion by inference. So that's why we see in the Puranas especially that this uh, dogma, more or less, of Brahma as the creator, Vishnu as the preserver, Rudra as the destroyer, is there because it's given, by, it's reached a conclusion by inference. Remember we talked about ascending logic or inference and descending logic or uh, deduction and how the Vedas actually function by descending logic. In other words, if it's not written in the Shastra, then to reason about it and come to some conclusion by logic is, is very iffy. Uh, it's very shaky, very uh, inaccurate at times. So now he's going to go on and explain very uh, plainly to Brahma what the real situation is. Oh, highly fortunate one, you realize then the great Shakti, higher than the highest and the cause of all causes, then why are you asking again and again that same question? By the will of that Shakti, I have got this idea of man and roam on the great ocean. 
In yuga after yuga, I assume by her will the tortoise, boar, man, lion, and dwarf incarnations. No one likes to take birth in the womb of inferior animals. Do you think that I willingly take unpleasant births as in the womb of boars, tortoise, etc.? Certainly not. What independent man is there who abandons the pleasurable enjoyment with Lakshmi and takes birth in inferior animals like fish or leaves his seat on the back of Garuda and becomes engaged in great war conflicts? O oh, Swayambhu, in the ancient days you saw before your very eyes that my head was cut off when the bowstring suddenly gave way. And then you brought a horse's head, and by that help, the divine artist Vishvakarma stuck that onto my headless body. O Brahma, since then I am known amongst men by the name of Hayagriva. This is well known to you. Now say, were I independent, would such an ignominy have happened to me? Never. Therefore, I am not independent. I am in every way under that Shakti. O lotus born, I always meditate on that Shakti, and I do not know any other than this Shakti. Well, that's pretty plain, that's pretty direct, that's pretty open of Vishnu to just come right out and say, well, I'm not really the Supreme. He is supreme, but only in a certain very narrow context within this Brahmanda, the universe. It's usually translated universe, but actually if we analyze in the Vedas the description of Brahmanda, it's more like the solar system. In fact, even the dimensions given for the size of our Brahmanda matches perfectly with the size of our solar system discovered by astronomers. So within this solar system, uh, which is uh, dominated by and almost defined by the center of the sun, this Vishnu is supreme. But as he says, he's not independent. He gets his power from a higher source. And what is that source? Mahashakti, the goddess, the universal mother. So then in closing, Narada said, Thus spoke Vishnu to Brahma. O Muni Veda Vyasa, Brahma spoke these to me. So you too better meditate on the lotus feet of Bhagavati calmly in the lotus of your heart for the success of your desire. That Devi will give you all that you wish. Sutta said, At these words of Narada, Satyavati's son, Veda Vyasa, went out into the hills for tapasya, trusting the lotus feet of the Devi as the all in all in this world. Thus ends the fourth chapter of the first skanda on the excellency of the Devi in the Mahapurana, Srimad Devi Bhagavatam of 18,000 verses. So, the man blunder strikes again. <laughs> we are culturally conditioned to think that the supreme boss has got to be male. But it just ain't so. And the test that anybody can perform is, let's say you have something that you want to attain, which is in harmony with the Vedas, or even if it's not, but it's better if it is. <laughs> you have some desire, you have some need. So, okay, pray to Brahma, pray to Vishnu, pray to Shiva, and then, Pray to Shakti and see which one awards your desire. Obviously, this is not something you can do over a weekend. Huh? It's something I've, been, I've experienced in my life over many, many years. 
I was a devotee of Krishna, who is an incarnation of Vishnu, for over 20 years. And there were certain things that Vishnu can award, but not everything. And similarly, there are certain areas in life where Brahma or Rudra, Shiva, or any of the other demigods, they, they each have their particular area of power and, and expertise. But if you want something really big, like liberation, moksha, huh? you have to go to the big boss at the top. <laughs> and that's Mahamaya. I mean, Maya is the cause of the bondage in the material world. So she's also the cause of being liberated from this material world. Doesn't that make sense? It's amazing how so-called intelligent people, out of bias, uh, resist this uh, final conclusion of the Vedas. But we're going to see, as we go deeper into this work, this Devi Bhagavatam, that it's really the only possible conclusion. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.